Okay, let's tap into the uh, parallelogram with a little more detail. So let's draw a shape in here and let's draw some diagonals. When we draw some diagonals, we have several more angles to investigate. And we also have some other sides to investigate, uh, some segments. So uh, right now there's no tick marks um, for this quadrilateral in here. Let me highlight the quadrilateral. It kind of looks like a parallelogram, but we cannot assume it is until we're either told it is or there's some tick marks. So now I'm just going to flat out tell you it's a parallelogram. So what does that mean? Well, if I make up some numbers and I make up, say, 12 for that side, well, that's a guarantee. If it's a parallelogram, it's going to be 12 on that side. Well, I'm going to make up some more numbers. Well, let's call this side 18 in here. Well, if that's 18 in there, then that's a guarantee. The other side on the bottom is going to be 18. So we have some more segments to investigate. Remember uh, the characteristics of the diagonals bisect each other. And so, and so if I make up some more numbers, uh, let's make up 14. So if that side is 14, what else do we know? Well, that side is going to be 14. And then that doesn't mean that this side is 14 and that side is 14. That really, um, that's for some other shapes like the rectangle and the square and so forth. So in the parallelogram, <laughs> Don't assume all four little segments in there are going to be congruent. But we do know for sure that these two are going to be congruent. And let's take a look at uh, the last two. So I'm going to just make up a number. Let's call it 15. So if that one is 15, that one's going to be 15. And before we go any further, um, take a look and analyze what you notice about that triangle and that triangle. So hopefully you are recognizing that. Those two triangles are congruent. Why are they congruent? Well, several reasons. One of them is side, side, side. And so let's examine a few more triangles we can analyze. Uh, let's take a look at this top yellow one right there. And this other yellow one on the bottom here. And what can we conclude about those two triangles? Those two triangles are congruent too. Why? Well, a number of reasons where you can use side, side, side again. Or if you take a look at these vertical angles, we could have used side angle side so everything we know about congruent triangles happens to pop up in this um, uh, chapter as well and so it looked like i just examined four triangles but i want you to be aware of there's other triangles that are overlapping in here there's actually four more triangles i'm going to try to highlight so how about this green one here that's like the fifth one and this other green one that's like the sixth one and just like before it turns out those two triangles are going to be congruent too. If you notice, that would be side, side, side as well. And so if I take a, if I erase all those green marks right there and look at the last two, oops, the last two set of um, triangles, how about this set and that set right there? Um, those are the last two. And it turns out that those two triangles are congruent as two, too. So I, I, I try to analyze four triangles all together. And I have four sets of congruent triangles within the parallelogram. So we just discussed the opposite sides. We just discussed the diagonals bisecting each other. And then um, we're starting to look at the uh, triangles. Um, that are formed by the diagonals and the properties of those triangles and how they're related. All right, let's take a look at the angles. So I'm gonna erase this picture right now, and I'm gonna draw another parallelogram, and let's do that over here. I know there's no evidence for a parallelogram, but let's just take my word for it. This is a parallelogram, and when I draw these diagonals in, we have all sorts of angles that has some uh, interesting math that's all connected to some other chapters we've explored. So we do know that opposite sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And what happens when both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, look at these angles in here, this angle and this angle. And what do you notice? Hopefully you will notice that those two angles are congruent. Why are they congruent? Well, those are alternating interior angles. Let's take a look at these two angles. 
that angle and that angle. And what can you discover about those two? Well, these two angles are congruent as well. Why? They're alternating interior. Well, let's take a look at these two angles in here. This angle and this angle. If we turn the head sideways, it turns out that this yellow line would be their transversal. And those two um, blue angles would be congruent as well. So I'll put three tick marks in and three tick marks in. And uh, we have one more color to explore. Let's uh, color um, uh, yellow. And so it turns out that that angle and that angle, just like the other ones, they are congruent too. Why? Well, they are alternating interior angles as well. All right, there's so many other types of angles in this picture. Hopefully you could see them all. Does anyone recognize the vertical angles? Yes, that's right. This angle and this angle, they're vertical. And what do we know? This angle and this angle, they're vertical as well. And what else do you see? Well, what do you know about those two angles? Well, that's a linear pair. And so is that. That's a linear pair. What do we know about linear pairs? Well, linear pairs are adjacent angles, and they're also supplementary. So I see four sets of linear pairs. Uh, we just mentioned some vertical angles. And so I didn't use any numbers when we were talking about these angles in here. I tried to point out whenever we have a parallelogram, all those colors are going to be coordinated with each other or congruent with one another based upon the properties of a parallelogram. And understanding that both pairs of opposite sides are going to be parallel. And once things are parallel, we have lots and lots of transversals. And once we have transversals, we have same side interior, alternating interior angles, if I extended some of these angles and uh, tr um, transversals in here, I would have corresponding and I would have alternating exterior angles as well. So let's draw one more picture and talk about the measurements and try to nail down some um, measures of angles and try to fill in the rest of the parallelogram. So I have what so far? I have a quadrilateral. I'm drawing two diagonals. And... I am just going to flat out tell you this is a parallelogram. So if this is a parallelogram. Um, let's try to find all the angles. Well, I have to kind of give you a kickstart. So I'm going to give you a kickstart right now. I'm going to say that's 20 degrees right there. I'm going to say this is uh, 30 degrees. And I'm going to come over here and say this one is uh, 70 degrees. All right, so um, there's lots of things going on. There's alternating interior angles, there's vertical angles, there's linear pairs. Uh, you have to start to see the exterior angle theorem. Uh, what's one example of the exterior angle theorem? Well, take a look at that angle right there. That angle right there is going to be the sum of those two angles right there. So there's exterior angle theorems to remember. And also, within any triangle that we know, every single triangle has to add up to be 180 degrees. So putting together all this information we know about geometry, what can we say? Well, if that one's 20, this one is going to be 20 degrees. If this one's 30, then that one's going to be 30 degrees, alternating interior angles. If that's going to be 70 degrees, then that one's going to be 70 degrees, alternating interior angles. Now, what else do I see? Well, I see this triangle over here that's a 70 and a 30, that is 100 degrees. So the angle sum theorem tells us that that angle has to be 80. Well, automatically this opens up another can of worms. The vertical angles, they're congruent, so that is 80 and 80. And then I see a linear pair in here. Well, that's going to be supplementary, so therefore that's 100. And the bottom angle there is 100. And so then I see another triangle here on the bottom. I see another triangle that has to add up to be 180. So I see 100 degrees and 20 degrees, that's 120. And 120 minus 180, that's going to give me 60. And if that angle is 60, then this one is going to be 60. And then all of a sudden, I see all 12 angles in this parallelogram. And we have completed this little um, problem. All right.